So today we will focus on measuring end user experience using some monitors built for this purpose within applications manager. If I remember correctly, in part one, we had taken a sample web application architecture and we were trying to find how applications managers monitoring capabilities fit into different aspects of this particular web application. And I believe points one, two, and three from this slide have already been addressed in part one. So today, web servers and websites is what we will be concentrating more on. So Bob and Susan were introduced to us in part one of the session. If you think about it, part one was aligned more towards easing Bob's responsibilities in an IT department in terms of being the IT admin. But today we will focus on how to ease Susan's responsibilities as the head of development. So what comes next in terms of Susan's responsibility as the DevOps head is what we are going to see from the agenda for today, where we will begin by leveraging synthetic transactions in order to understand how applications interact with each other and then to understand how your user, the end user interacts with your web app or your website and then put this analysis into meaningful use to find out whether or not your web application can deliver the optimal performance that you expect it to deliver. Again, this information can be collected across geographies. That is, how is the performance of your website or web app when accessed from different parts of the globe is also in part of today's agenda. So let us begin the webinar series quickly with the first topic for today, website monitoring. Now within Applications Manager, there are four different types of monitors built for the purpose of website monitoring, each custom designed to suit different monitoring needs that business organizations might have. We will first see the URL and the URL sequence monitor. And then during the course of the session up ahead, we will explore end user monitoring with the real browser monitor as well as the URL content monitor. So firstly, the URL monitor. The URL monitor not only helps you monitor the availability of a particular URL that you want to monitor, it also presents, as can be seen from the screenshot in this slide, it also presents the response time split up. Now this response time split up can be analyzed to find out whether there is an error in the host server side or if the error is with the network or if there is an increased processing time on the server side. So based on the inputs from the URL monitor, you can make sure that the particular URL of, a, of your website is always delivering a smooth experience. Talking about the URL sequence monitor next, the URL sequence monitor allows users to monitor a sequence of URLs. Now this sequence could be anything from a user's typical navigational flow throughout your website. Now when a user lands on your website and clicks on a sequence of URLs, the entire sequence can be captured with the help of the URL sequence monitor. Now the URL sequence monitor runs with the help of a recorder tool. So you have to install and run the recorder tool using which you capture the URL sequences and each particular URL in the sequence is added as a monitor and then you can track the response time, the page size, the transactional response between different URLs in the sequence and so on. So that's about the URL and the URL sequence monitor. Let us quickly jump to the product and try configuring the URL and the URL sequence monitor by ourselves. 
So if you see the screen right now, I'm inside Applications Manager product and I'm going to click on New Monitor right here and then click on Add New Monitor. Now the monitor that we are going to add is the URL monitor first. So you can find that within Web Servers and Services right here. Enter a display name. So I'm entering a sample display name. And then the URL address that you want to monitor and then specify other information such as a timeout and calling interval. When you scroll down further, you will find the option to enter request parameters if you have any and also the ability to choose the SSL version based on the SSL version that you're using. Again, with the content check option, you can also perform a content check for the given URL that you want to monitor. So you can specify the conditions here and then click on the add URL monitor when you're done with configuring the different fields. And then you should see a message that says that the URL monitor has been successfully configured. So let's go to the monitors tab and see the URL monitor collect metrics. So here I am, I'm going to open a URL monitor that I've added. And so here we are on the inside of the URL monitor that we added and you can see the response time, the response time split up. This is the graph that we actually saw in the slide a few moments ago and then page size and basically every detail that you need to make sure that the URL monitor is always healthy and available performing as expected. So let's go back to new monitor again and try adding the URL sequence monitor this time. So again, web server services and HTTPS URL sequence monitor. Now remember, I had told you that the URL sequence monitor requires a recorder tool to be installed. So once you click on add new monitor and then the URL sequence monitor, you will be prompted to download and install the recorder tool here. So you can install the recorder tool and once you run the recorder tool, you should be able to capture the URL sequences and then add them as a monitor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the URL sequence recorder tool that I have downloaded in my machine. So give me a moment when, while I get the URL recorder tool running. So there it is. Once you start the URL rec sequence recorder tool, this is what the recorder tool looks like. And here at the address bar, I'm going to enter the URL sequences that I want to monitor. So I begin with uh, one URL, appmanager.com, and I click on the demo tab right here. Click on yes and maybe navigate a little bit more. So we have clicked, we have performed three steps here, right from landing to the page and then clicking on the demo tab and then the get code tab. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on preview and save. Enter the host details here. The port number now make sure all of these details are correct when you enter it and here is the preview box where we can preview all the URL sequences that we browse as well as the individual components within each URL that we browsed so we landed on appmanager.com first and there are several elements of that particular URL that have also been captured with the help of the recorder tool. So now what you can do is choose to keep the URLs that you want to monitor while delete the rest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep a few and I'm going to remove the rest. 
So, all right, so I'm going to keep these three. You can enter any display name to these URL sequences. So I'm just giving some sample names. These names could be anything that you want. And then click on next. Again, make sure all the details entered here are correct. Verify it once and then click on save transaction. You should be able to see a success message like this one. So what I'm going to do now is close this window, close this one as well, and go back to the product where we should hopefully see the URL sequence monitor added with some metrics. So here I'm going to open this one here. Now this is what the inside of the URL sequence monitor looks like. Now this is a sample sequence URL sequence monitor that I've added. Here you can find the overview of the URL sequences altogether, the response time of individual URLs. So this is basically the overview of all the URLs that have been added within this monitor. Now let's go and explore an individual URL sequence. So once you click on the particular sequence, you have all the necessary details about that particular URL sequence. Now the URL sequence is basically another form of the URL monitor that we configured basically a few moments ago. So all the detail for a particular URL you see here are just the same as the details for any particular URL monitor that you might add separately. So I believe the URL and the URL sequence monitors are clear to all of us. So going back to the presentation once again, before we move ahead from the URL and URL sequence monitors and into end user monitoring, let us quickly analyze just why the URL or the URL sequence monitor is important. Now these points should help you understand, first of which is imagine if your site is not reachable due to a lot of traffic in a particular URL, if your landing page is low, now these are problems that people experience on a regular basis, right? For example, unexpected errors such as the internal server error or the bad gateway error. Now imagine a scenario where you have an online sale running, say there's a midnight sale that starts tonight. And so around the time, around midnight, you can expect a lot of traffic to certain URLs of your website, right? Now, what do you do in times like those? These problems intensify in situations like those. So with the URL or URL sequence monitor, you can rest assured that your website or web app is always delivering the best experience that you want your users to have. So we leverage all of these insights together to make sure that our website is perfectly optimized for our end users. So moving to the next topic, that is running synthetic end user tests with the help of the end user monitor within applications manager. Now the end user monitor, it basically runs, let me tell you at the very beginning that it runs with the help of an end user monitoring agent. So what this agent does is once you install it in a branch office, the agent starts collecting metrics about the apps and servers in that particular network. And then it transmits this information to the parent applications manager setup that could be anywhere in your head office. So imagine two different branch offices, say one located in Paris, the other located in say New York. So how do you measure the performance of your apps and servers running across these two offices? from a third place where your headquarters are. So that is when the end user monitor comes into play. The agent collects real time metrics and transmits this information periodically. Now remember, I told you that this end user monitoring can collect data across different locations. Now, if you see this 
representation here, you can see that there are two agents that I have named Texas and New York. So basically, these are the two agents that are communicating with their respective servers and applications and then communicating to the parent. Now, if you notice here, the DNS, the LDAP, the mail and the ping monitor, along with the real browser monitor are all supported in the end user monitoring agent. So basically, if you have any of these five monitors in your setup, the end user monitoring will associate with any of these monitors and then instantly start collecting and transmitting data. As you can see here, these agents basically are running alongside the DNS monitor, these two with the ping and these one, this with the real browser monitoring. Now the DNS, LDAP, mail and ping monitors are basically monitors that all of us are perhaps familiar with. So what we are going to do today, or in fact, what our primary focus today while dealing with the end user monitoring is going to be the real browser monitor. So let's just quickly see what the real browser monitor offers to business organization before we jump to the product and configure the real browser monitor. So firstly, the real browser monitor helps you launch a browser and mimic a user interaction with your site. Now, what does this essentially mean? So this means that basically the real browser monitoring will help you to perform the navigational path flow that any visitor of your site will probably have. So imagine a visitor landing to your site and then navigating across two, three URLs and then eventually checking out from your site. So this behavior or any user path flow can be mimicked and the performance or the responsiveness or the loading time of each page can be analyzed to make sure that when a typical user browses your website from any part of the world, everyone has the same optimal browsing experience that you desire them to have. Now, these agents, as I mentioned, the end user monitoring agent will periodically obtain the data and send it to the parent. So you can rest assured that all the information that you have about your apps and servers from different locations is not only relevant, but is just as recent. The real browser monitor, apart from the bundled Firefox browser, also allows you to import test cases from Selenium in order to collect metrics within Applications Manager. If you see this slide right here, it shows how the real browser monitor automatically builds monitoring scripts. Now, how it does this is the real browser monitor, apart from the end user monitoring agent, requires a recorder tool to be installed. Now, this recorder tool is similar to the recorder tool we saw a couple of moments ago with the URL sequence monitor. So what the real browser monitor does is when you navigate across different pages. So for example, say you have a transaction that involves logging in, clicking on two links and then logging out. This four step interaction is captured with the help of the recorder. But not only that, the real browser monitoring automatically builds a record and playback, a playback script, in fact. So anytime you try to poll the monitor, the transaction that you have performed, based on this automatic script, the transaction runs in the background and the data, the recent performance data, gets populated. Now, what is this data that we are talking about in terms of real browser monitoring? That is what you can see from this screen. So as I just explained, the different steps that you take are right here with the split up in the form of a graphical representation of the load times of each of these steps. So when you landed on a particular page and what was the time spent on that, that page, what was the time taken to load that page? including the health and availability status of that page is present here. Again, 
We can collect the response time. This is the summarized version of the response and transaction times that the two agents, that is the Texas and New York agents, have collected and sent to my parent machine. Again, let us move a slide ahead and see what more in terms of data the real browser monitoring module has to offer. So if we browse across different URLs in the site, now I said about capturing the response time and the load time of different URLs, but with the real browser monitor, you can actually capture the sequence. In fact, the real browser monitor automatically takes a screenshot of every step that you take and presents, as is seen from this graph right here, a resource split up based on the size as well as the count of the elements present in that particular page. So here you can see is a sample screenshot of the URL that I landed on and the resource split up, that is the resource size and count. So when you analyze these graphs, you can actually plan about adding or removing or reallocating the distribution of resources, different resources, that is the HTML elements or CSS or script elements in the page so as to ensure that the browsing experience is smooth. But, but not just limited to this, the real browser monitor also offers the waterfall graph. Now this waterfall graph could be really useful to pinpoint the, the particular element that could actually be posing a performance problem. So if you see here, this sample box here, when you hover over a particular element within the URL, that is the particular step, you will see details such as the start time, the duration for that particular element to load, and then the response time, the latency, the connection time, metrics like those. So this waterfall graph allows you to pinpoint or locate exactly the particular element of the step that is causing a particular problem. So that was a detailed summary about the real browser monitor. Now let us go to the product and try configuring the real browser monitor to understand it better. So once again, new monitor, add new monitor, and web server services, real browser monitoring. Again, as I said, I'll be prompted to download the recorder tool as well as the end user monitoring agent. As you can see from this screen, the end user monitoring agent for me is actually already active. However, you can download it and run it. It doesn't take long. And then you should also remember to download the real browser recorder. So once you download the end user monitoring agent, you will see that the agent gets added within services. So right here, you can see the manage engine end user monitoring agent is running. So make sure that the end user monitoring agent is running first of all, and then just as we did for the URL sequence recorder, I'm going to open the real browser recorder tool that I have installed in my machine and show it to you in just a quick moment, just how the real browser recorder works. So just give me one quick minute so I can get the real browser recorder tool running. All right, so here it is. So once you have the EUM agent running, you can launch the real browser recorder and this is what the real browser recorder looks like. Now remember to specify all the details correctly. The SSL port number, whichever it is for you, click on connect and enter the applications manager or credentials and hit login. So here I am. So this is the real browser recorder tool ready to use. So I'm simply going to click on 
I mean browse a few URLs and record the transaction. Now imagine this transaction as a typical visitor to my site, that is the applications manager website. So I'm just trying to mimic a sample transaction that any user might likely have. So I have landed on the page. This will ideally be step one. Once again, I click on demo. So this is step two. There's the demo page and I click on get quote. So this is step three. All right, so I believe three steps are going to be enough for this example. What I'm going to do now is again, click on preview and save. So once again, the preview box. So this is the first step that I took and the action that I performed was I clicked on open and then again, click and wait. So this is not just the step, but the action you perform within each step is also captured. So once again, I'm just going to rename these steps to something simple. Now, of course, these steps, step names could again be any name that you'd want to see. So step three. All right, so I'm going to click on next monitor name. Some sample monitor name, the poll frequency and the agent. Now remember, there are two agents here because I have two agents basically installed in my network. So you can choose the agent that you want to use to record this transaction or to mimic this transaction and pull the data at all times. So I am going to choose both of them. Both of them and click on save. All right, so apparently I have the same name already done. So let's just name it something else. ABM, ABC maybe. That's simple. All right, so you have to remember to make sure you do not make some small errors like these. So once again, we have saved the transaction. Let us close it, go to the monitor section and see how the real browser monitor looks like on the inside as we saw in the slides. So let's just take a sample, this one. And all right, so this is the EUM agent that has collected the data. And these are the different steps and the response time from the agent. So let us just click on the agent and see the steps that this agent has basically recorded and see the different components, the elements that are present, the information present within this monitor for the particular transaction. So this is the average page load time, the transaction time. This again is the page load time of individual steps. That is step one, step two, step three. Now, of course, we have only performed three steps. So there are three, depending upon the steps and the complexity, this graph gives becomes more responsive. So. This is step one, step two, step three, and the overall information about the load time and health. But then if you scroll down, this is what we were talking about in the slide. Right here is the step that is one, two, and three. So this is the first page that we landed on and the resource split up based on HTML scripts. So apparently these pages have mostly HTML elements. So insights like these could actually help you make decisions such as maybe reduce the HTML components and increase some other components, try different combinations to find out which combination delivers the best user experience. So similarly, this is for step two and this is for step three. If you come down again, stepwise, the waterfall graph that we saw, and this is what I was talking about in the slide. That is the start time, the connection time, the network latency. So basically every information that you need about different elements within the URLs or the steps that you take are present here. So that this makes identifying and eliminating malfunctioning elements of your website easier. So I believe the real browser monitor again is clear to all of you guys here. Now remember, if any part of the session is 
not clearly comprehensible, you can always ask us for a personalized demo to focus on the particular aspects that you might be interested in. So again, having said that, let us go back to the product, I mean the presentation once again. And before we move to the next thing on the agenda, once again, a quick question. That is, why does one need an EUM feature? Now again, these can be explained with the help of the following points. So the end user monitoring on the whole helps monitor business app performances across different locations to help measure the workflow of multiple pages. Now, of course, now these multiple pages, these are just a few examples that I've taken, but of course the usage of this particular monitor or the particular feature expands to all industries basically. Now again, test web apps performance. Now you have a sample web app you could test the performance prior to its launch or while it is actively in business to make sure that at all times the performance of your web apps is desirable and then also to test critical pages and paths. Now a fine example for this point would be consider, consider the payments page of your website. Now you wouldn't want the payments page of your website to be unresponsive or take a long time to load you can make sure that all of these pages, the critical parts, everything is measured optimally at all times and deliver a smooth experience. So moving to the next topic, website defacement. Now defacement I believe is the common buzzword that all of you might be familiar with, particularly with a lot of hackers defacing popular websites. So the technical definition of website defacement goes something like this. That is an unauthorized alteration of any component or any element of your website can be classified as website defacement. Within applications manager, with the help of the website content monitor, you can perform a content check of all of these HTML elements, be it text, script, anchor, image, iframe, or link. So any of these components, if defaced or altered without authorization, the website content monitor will be in place to alert you in order to mitigate the effect of an unforeseen defacement attack. So we will quickly go and see how the website content monitor works and then come back to the presentation once again. So right here, once again, I am at the new monitor tab and I'm going to add a new monitor. And this time, this is going to be the website content monitor. So the display name of the website content, content monitor, so I'm going to name it as a Good site, the domain URL, maybe again. Now remember to specify whether it is HTTP or HTTPS. And then if you see this option here, the get web pages. So this is the domain URL that is a parent URL that I have entered. While when you click on the get web pages, Applications Manager will automatically fetch all the different web pages that is a child web pages linked within this URL. So when you go to appmanager.com and try to inspect the page, you will find that all of these URLs are actually href tags within the parent domain. So Applications Manager will collect all of it and present it to here, you here giving you the option to choose the child URLs that you want to perform a content check on and then click on add monitors. So once you configure this, the monitor should be added successfully. All right, so there it is. There's a success message that the monitor has been added. So while this collects some data, let us go and see 
a website content monitor and just how it looks like on the inside so once again i'm going to take this one here that has collected data and if you come down here so these are the two urls within this monitor that for which the website content monitor is actively doing a content check. So here is the overview of the deface script or text or whatever element it is that has been defaced, the percentage it has been defaced. And let's just click this and see on the inside the degree of defacement that has occurred across a particular URL. So as you can see here, there's a tab that says the deface script element. So this is precisely how the defaced elements will be presented. That is on the left will be your original content and on the right is the content that has been modified. So you can compare here and find out what modification has been done and then try to mitigate the impact of this unauthorized modification. Similarly, here are the other elements that includes the defaced image details apparently this one right here and then anchor details so iframe link anchor script everything that gets defaced within the particular html page the website content monitor is right there to perform a content check and inform you so that is the website content monitor let us once again go back to the presentation and see what's next in today's agenda. And that would be web servers and web services. So when we talk about web servers and web services, applications manager facilitates monitoring for the following popular web servers and services that include the Apache server, the popular search framework, Elasticsearch, the reverse proxy, Nginx, HA proxy, and then some REST API monitors as well. So when we talk about web servers and services, within Applications Manager, these are some of the key metrics that we collect for the following web servers or services. Now remember, these details, the request details, memory details, transaction details, thread pool and session utilization details all of these details will be collected periodically for all the web servers and services now these are the metrics that is the key metrics but these are not the only metrics that will be collected so let's go to the product and just see in detail about all the types of metrics for these web servers and services we'll explore a few two or three of them and see just how the metrics are presented so here i am once again within monitors so i'm going to save you the time of adding a web server or services because it's pretty much the same as anything else so i'm going to take a sample web server and show you how the web server looks on the inside so this one right here is the apache server so when i click on the apache server here i am on the inside of this particular apache server you can see the response time, the request details, the busy servers, bytes transferred, and the different attributes alongside their values. Now, like any other monitor, you can configure a thresh threshold, configure alarms, generate reports, edit monitors, and so on and so forth. So this is a sample Apache server. Let us see another web server. Maybe this time, let us take, yeah, right, this one, Elasticsearch. So in Elasticsearch, again, let us take an example. So this is a sample Elasticsearch server with the details present within it. So as you can see here, different tabs presenting different information. So let me click on one tab and see the memory information for a particular this particular Elasticsearch monitor. So right here is the memory details a garbage collection and buffer pool details for that particular elastic search monitor now not just this every single thread with its con corresponding details is also present here so you can see the different threads the health of different threads and the performance status of all of these different threads again going forward in the next tab is the network details about this particular elastic search monitor 
So that is how the inside of an Elasticsearch merge looks like. Let us have a quick look at one more web server or service before we see what's next. So this is another web server that I've taken, the reverse proxy Nginx server. So how does the Nginx server look like on the inside or rather what are the metrics collected for this particular server? That is what you can see here from this screen, the response time, the active connections, the request in reading states per second, writing state. So basically you understand that all the information that is relevant, that is important with regards to the Nginx server is right here. Of course, like any other server, reports, alarms, thresholds can all be configured for this server as well. So, all right, we saw a couple of sample web server and services. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you quickly how SOAP requests and SOAP responses work within Applications Manager. So for this, what I have done once again is I have taken a sample web service that I have added earlier today. So within this, you can see, now this monitor information is basically the information that is asked while adding the monitor. So I'm going to save you the time and not show you how to add this monitor. I'm sure with these details mentioned right here, you can get the monitor added. But once you add the monitor, you have the WSDL response time present here on the inside when data collection starts happening. And right here is the important part, that is the operation statistics. Now there is one operation N to D that is already here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new operation and show it to you just how the SOAP requests and responses work within Applications Manager. So I'm going to use this operation, say number two words, All right, so this is the SOAP request. What I'm going to do now is replace this question mark right here with say five. And what we can do is before we see the response, let's just test the response. So right here is the response and you can see that the response five in words is right here. So once that is done, you can save it. And once you save the operation, you should be able to see it right here. So this is the operation that I just added. Similarly, this is a previous operation that I added that is the number to decimal. So if you see here is the SOAP request for that particular operation and right here is the response. So that is configuring SOAP requests and responses within web services. One final thing before we wind up today's session is how to configure REST API monitors. So REST API monitors, I'm going to take a new monitor, add new monitor, and let's come back here and try adding the REST API monitor. Now, again, I am not going to add a REST API monitor, but what I want to do is walk you through the addition steps. So display name, timeout, all the fields here are pretty much known to you and quite simple to fill out except this one right here. So how do you actually find out what the HTTP REST API URL is? Now I'm going to show you this notepad right here which has the pattern in which the REST API URL is supposed to be. So the REST API URL begins with the host server name and the port number and then the API key followed by the resource and attribute ID of a particular resource that you want to monitor and the particular attribute that you want details of. So how do you get the API key, the resource and attribute IDs? I'm just going to show it to you in one quick moment. So the REST API is right here within this option right here. So if you notice, this is the API key to use the Applications Manager REST APIs. And where do you find the resource ID and the attribute ID? Now, of course, you're going to use the REST API to pull out the attribute, a particular attribute detail 
for a particular resource. So let us consider this one, say the Postgres SQL. Now I'm going to open this monitor and let us assume that I want the attribute ID of this particular attribute right here, active connections. This attribute for the resource PGSQL monitor. So I click here to see the details and I copy this URL paste it in the notepad and if you look closely you will find that it is the resource ID for the PGSQL monitor and right here is the attribute ID of the particular attribute that is active connection so once you have done that you should be able to add the monitor so let us once again go to the rest api monitor and see just how it works on the inside so remember when you add the rest api monitor you will be asked to specify let us see the edit monitor page and see what details we will be needing so yeah when you add the REST API monitor, the response type could be anything from text, XML to JSON. Now remember when you choose the response time as text, you can avail the option of content check for that type, that response type. However, we will just take a look at this monitor that has been added using, the, I mean, that uses the JSON response time. So here I am on the inside of this REST API monitor that presents details that is the response time details the performance overview what i'm going to do here is this is the json schema that you can see now what if i want to add a new attribute right here so this is an existing attribute that i have added let us copy this whole json code and paste it in an online json editor so once i paste it here this is the response that i get so let us expand this further and say i need the result say the display name of the arrays within result the fourth one in fact so I'm going to show how to do that. So I'm going to click on add a new JSON schema. So the first part is what I want to call this particular. So I'm going to add a b a b some sample response and then say five and then the display name so let me just quickly go through it if i have entered the details correctly and i click on update json schema so once i do that and go to the monitor actions start polling the monitor i should be able to see that detail right here so let us see if that detail is available here now that we have added a new json schema within the response times that it is. So the new attribute AB with the corresponding value is right here. So based on this, for any resource, based on any attribute, you can pull the data. So in the same way, you can also do the same operation when you choose the response type as XML right here. But we have seen JSON, I'm sure XML is just the same and you'll be able to configure it yourselves. So that brings us to the end of today's webinar session. So before we wind up, let us have a quick recap of what we have seen in today's session. So we began with website monitoring using different monitors within Applications Manager that included the URL monitor, the URL sequence monitor, and then we saw how end user monitoring works, especially in terms of the real browser monitor. And finally, we had a look at the website content monitor that basically 
is another name for the website defacement monitor that applications manager has. We took a look at web servers and services, some sample web servers, Elasticsearch, Nginx. And then finally, we saw how to configure SOAP requests and responses and to gather attribute data for different resources using the REST API monitors.